Who you picking? Jerry West or Pistol Pete? Let me know in the comments. Tag team like Kyrie and KD. Or the Lake Show with King James and AD. Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s. But no black and white, I need that in HD. Yeah, dog. Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy Ant Hen Dog, and we back to it. You know how we do it. Pistol Pete Maravich. I've gotten a lot of suggestions on reacting to some of his videos, and I'm gonna definitely need y'all help with this one because I really don't know anything about Pistol Pete. Uh, I think he was a great passer for the most part, but. I saw one, actually I saw one, when I was looking up this video, I did see a highlight that said he had 68 points versus the Knicks, so he must have been more than a passer too, he must have been an all-around player, but before we get into this video, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, make sure y'all like this video, if y'all like this video, and go ahead and write something in the comments, write what other players y'all want me to react to, but for this video, like I said, we got Pistol Pete. Uh, I think after this video, this is going to be like kind of my intro to Pistol Pete, and then after this, I'm going to start going to some of his other videos. Just like other games and different different things like that. But I think this would be a good intro video. So let's get to it. We got how good was Pistol Pete Maravich actually? Let's get it. Pete Maravich, better known as Pistol Pete, was one of the best NBA players of the 70s. A dribbling magician, outstanding shooter, and arguably the greatest NCAA player ever. No. He was playing a brand of basketball 40 years ahead of his time. All right, I'm going to stop him right there. I, you know, I, I told y'all before, I, I pause a lot. So if you don't like somebody that pause a lot, then you probably ain't gonna like my YouTube channel. I have to pause though, because I got a bad memory and I'll forget it. So as soon as I think of something, I'll pause it. But they just said that he was arguably the greatest college player ever. And I don't want to say he wasn't because I don't know enough about him, but I just got done reacting to making the case of Kareem. And Kareem won three national championships. Uh, he would have won four if they would have let him play his freshman year, but he had to play freshman or something his freshman year. But his sophomore, junior, and senior year, he won three national championships. So if Pistol Pete didn't do that, I don't know how he can be considered the greatest college player ever. But let me know what y'all think. Who's the greatest college basketball player of all time? All right, and players today can't even do some of the stuff the Pistol did in the 70s. Here's the career retrospective of Pete Maravich and how his showmanship influenced future NBA stars who stole a lot of their moves from the Pistol. Mm. Early life and the origin of the Pistol. Pete Maravich was born in 1947 and basketball was in his blood. His father, Press, was a professional player for two years in the NBL and BAA, two leagues that merged and became the NBA in 1949. Press then started coaching, and because of his job, the Maravich family had to move a lot. The only constant for Press and his son Pete was basketball, which was a dish served for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. While Pete was only an infant, he already started dribbling, and by the age of seven, he started playing organized basketball. When Press Maravich coached at Clemson University, he would always bring Pete to practices and games, and the two would always talk about basketball in some shape or form. Pete would dribble the basketball on his way to school, while he rode on a bike, and even slept with the ball. At the age of 12, he was practicing up to 10 hours a day. His he father taught him shit. the fundamentals, but Pete loved basketball so much that he started improvising and countless hours in the gym all alone. Gave birth to some of the most spectacular moves the NBA has ever seen. But more on that later. As a freshman, Pete started playing for Daniels High School <laughs> in Clemson at the age of 14. But he barely played on a team filled with seniors. And even when Pete would come into the game, the older guys avoided passing him the ball. The crowd also laughed when they saw the small, skinny 14-year-old on the floor which pissed the hell out of Pete. However, one single shot changed everything. Pete's team was down by one in the last seconds. Because he hardly ever had the ball, the opponents never guarded Maravich. So the Daniels coach decided to pass the ball to Pete. He got the open shot and made the game winner. And it was wow. then that he received the nickname Pistol Pete. It was given to him by a reporter who noticed that when Pete shot towards the basket, it looked like he was pulling out a gun. The nickname remains, and the legend of the Pistol Pete was born. NCAA mm. GOAT. After graduating from high school, Pete and his father decided that Pete should go to prep school for another year. Pete was six foot three at the time, but he weighed just over 130 pounds and could not withstand physical duels at the college level. So 
He spent a year at the Edwards Military Academy, where he grew to six foot five and bulked up to a respectable 160 pounds, which improved his game tremendously. At the same time, his father Press got the head coaching job at Louisiana State, which was known for football, but had a minuscule basketball program. Press asked Pete to attend LSU and join him, which Pete bluntly rejected because he wanted to play for a renowned basketball college. However, after Press threatened to kick him out of the house, Press decided <laughs> to join his father at LSU. Under his father's <laughs> college, Pete became a superstar and would set records that will likely never get broken. In his freshman year, he averaged 43.6 points per game, Wait, but because what? of the rules in the 70s, freshman were not allowed to play on the varsity team. The crowd at LSU would often watch the freshman games and then leave once Pete's game was done and wasn't even interested in watching the varsity team. That's Pete led crazy. the freshmen to a 17-1 record that season, while the varsity team, led by Press, had a record of 3-23. And and his so, I don't think Kareem averaged 43 as a freshman, so... He might have got to a better start than Kareem. You know, I gotta chill. You know, I gotta, I gotta let... Then talk about Pistol first before I just automatically say that he wasn't the GOAT. But yeah, Kareem didn't average 43, so he averaged 40. They said that the the, the, the crowd would come to the freshman games to watch him. And then when it was time for the, the big the big team, everybody would leave. So that, that's kind of a crazy dynamic. I know the varsity team was like, what the heck? Like, bring this dude up. Let's get these fans and the crowd to come to our games. In sophomore year, Pete was able to play for the varsity team and immediately asserted himself as the primary option on offense with 43.8 points on average. Another he was the NCAA's 43? top scorer that season. And he repeated that feat as a junior with 44.2 points. What? And as a senior with 44.5 no, points per game. Bro. Along with two National College Player of the Year no. awards. In the three years he spent on the varsity team, Pistol Pete scored 3,660 67 points in 83 games, averaging an incredible 44.2 points per game. He owns almost every NCAA scoring record to this day. And what's even more impressive is that he broke all those records in the era without the three-point shot. Former I tell you right there, I, I literally knew nothing about this guy because I'm thinking that he's just a super great passer. Like, no, this dude was averaging 40. He averaged 40 points for four straight years. Like, that's unheard of. He might end up being a college GOAT, man. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think about that. But he, I don't think he was winning as much as Kareem. But when nobody averaging 40-plus for four straight seasons, bro, that's crazy and unheard of. And I never knew that. And he had 68 in the, in the NBA, too, at one point. So this dude could score the ball. For LSU coach Dale Brown charted every shot Maravich scored. And because he shot many jumpers from long distances, Brown calculated that Pete would have averaged an astounding 57 points per game if his long jumpers counted as threes. Oh yeah, because they didn't A count as threes. in the NBA. Pistol Pete was the most known player in the country by the time he finished college, and he had plenty of options where to continue his career. He was contacted by half the ABA teams, many NBA teams, but also the Harlem Globetrotters, who offered Maravich $1 million to join them. The Maravich dribbled shooters? the ball like a globetrotter. He shot the ball better than all of them, and he knew every basketball trick in the book. Between so back then, was the globetrotters bigger than the NBA? Because I don't, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't know if the NBA was offering $1 million contracts back then. Let me know, how big was the globetrotters back then? Legs, behind the back, dribbling two balls at the same time, you name it, Pistol Pete was doing it. If he had joined the Globe Charters, he would have been the first white member, but he'd fit right in because of a unique skill set. Hey. However, his dream was to play in the NBA like his dad, and the Pistol was selected with the third pick by the Atlanta Hawks in the stacked 1970 NBA draft. In the rookie season, Maravich was under tremendous pressure after signing a contract worth nearly $2 million oh, for okay. five seasons. Well, at the time, question. the largest contract in NBA history. However, he immediately proved that he is one of the best players in the world and that his big contract is justified. Maravich averaged 23.2 points and 4.4 assists per game as a rookie, which was the eighth best scoring output that season. The second season was supposed to confirm Pistol's superstar status, but he contracted mononucleosis, which caused him to lose 20 pounds. As a result, Pete missed 16 games, and the illness slowed him down to 19.3 points per game. But Pistol Pete would bounce back in his third season, averaging 26 points and 7 assists per game, yeah, making Pistol his first all-star team. In his fourth and final season with the Hawks, Pete was the second best scorer in the league, with 27.7 points per game. But the Hawks played miserably and didn't even make the playoffs Pistol. after three straight first-round playoff exits. All right, so we he wasn't really winning. 
New Orleans Jazz joined the NBA in 1974, and in the expansion draft, they acquired Maravich from the Hawks for two players and four draft picks. By doing so, they signed the local hero, considering that the Jazz Arena was less than 100 miles away from LSU. Joining a newly established franchise is a double-edged sword, and Pete learned that the hard way. Yes, he was a beloved superstar, and all the fans wanted to see him play, but on the flip side, the New Orleans Jazz wasn't any good, just like most new teams are. The Jazz didn't make the playoffs until 1984, five seasons after Maravich left the team and their relocation to Utah. But even though he never made the playoffs, Pistol Pete was playing the basketball of his life with the Jazz as one of the most unstoppable players in the league. He averaged 25.2 points mm. and 5.6 assists in five and a half seasons with the franchise, during which he led the NBA in scoring with 31 points per game in 1977. Oh, that was with three all-star appearances and three all-NBA nods. On February 5th, 1977, in a game against the New York Knicks, the Pistol scored 68 points, That's a career high, crazy. at the time the most points ever by a guard. The feat is even more impressive when we know that he was guarded by Walt Frazier, one mm. of the premier defensive guards of the 70s, and that he scored 68 without a three-pointer. In 1978, Maravich played the best all-around season of his career, averaging 27 points, 6.7 assists, and a career-high two steals per game. He would have probably led the league in scoring once again, and likely even pushed the Jazz to the playoffs, but he unfortunately injured his knee halfway through the season and was forced to miss the final 30 32 games of the season. Before he got hurt, the Jazz had a winning record due to a 10-game win streak. After Maravich went down, they lost eight in a row, and their playoff hopes were shot dead. Tough. Fortunately for Maravich and the Jazz fans, knee injuries plagued Pete for the rest of his career, as he only played two more years in the NBA. After the Jazz moved to Salt Lake City in 1979, they traded Maravich mid-season to the Celtics, where he teamed up with rookie Larry Bird. Oh, what? It was the first NBA season with a three-point line, and Maravich immediately proved what kind of a shooter he was. The pistol shot 67% for three in his final 67%. year. Bad knees that severely hampered his movement. Legacy. Pistol Pete was a basketball savant, and he played basketball 30 or 40 years ahead of his time. At the time of his retirement, he had by far the best handles in NBA history, and many of the greatest ball handlers mm. took many pages out of Pete's ball handling book. He was a trendsetter that inspired generations, and if your favorite ball handler didn't learn from the pistol, they likely stole some moves from someone who stole from Pete. That LaMelo ball underhand full court pass, Maravich did that in the 70s. That's Magic crazy. Johnson's around the back defender freeze and then pass? Maravich did that too. Hook what? shot like Kareem, turnaround jumper like MJ, or readjusting his jump shot midair like Larry Bird. It was all routinely done by the pistol. When he played the game, the NBA was dominated by centers like Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem, and guards like him were unicorns. Other than Jerry West, nobody else attempted that many jump shots, let alone made them with great accuracy. With an unbelievable floater and layup game, finishing with both hands, killer handles, and the ability to both score and pass, Pistol Pete is most often compared to Steve Nash, a I can guy see who that. came to the NBA 16 years Nash. after Maravich retired. If he played in a three-point era, he would likely average around 30 points per game. And if he played in a better team, he could have easily been an MVP multiple times and won a few championships. However, Pete didn't have the best of luck in his career and life. In one interview in 1974, what? Pete said, I don't want to play in the NBA for 10 years and then die of a heart attack at 40. But unfortunately, that's precisely what happened. His oh. NBA career was cut short after 10 years due to knee injuries. And in nine of 10 seasons, his teams had a losing record. And then in 1988, almost like he predicted it, he died of a heart attack at the age of 40 when he was playing pickup basketball. Basketball. An autopsy revealed the cause of death to be a rare heart defect. He had been born with a missing left coronary artery. He lived for basketball, was a gym rat all his life, and ultimately died on the court. His last words were, I feel great. Damn. I wasn't expecting it to end like that. Damn, but shout out to Pistol Pete though, man. I learned a lot in that video. But one thing before we get out of here, I want y'all to answer. I asked earlier, I'm gonna ask again. Who y'all taking, Jerry West or Pistol Pete? Let me know in the comments. But I appreciate y'all like always, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if y'all haven't. Make sure y'all like this video if y'all like this video. And like I just said, write something in the comments. But I appreciate y'all like always. We out.